Welcome to the video on permutations and combinations. I'm your teacher, Salman Ofar. Uh, we will discuss today the various kinds of problems that you get in permutations and combinations, in specific reference to the various admissions tests and how to handle those problems. Now, permutations and combinations have, have practical applications in real life because these uh, concepts will help you figure out how you can achieve um, different outcomes and the number of ways that you can achieve those outcomes. So there's a lot of real, ap real life application of this particular concept. Okay? So we're going to start off by learning some basics of permutations. Um, now, the difference, the, the first thing that you need to know is the difference between permutations and combinations. So how are permutations and combinations different from, e different from each other? So permutations relate to the act of choosing and arranging different outcomes. On the other hand, in combinations, we are only choosing. Okay, we are not arranging. Please remember this clear distinction. Therefore, the number of permutations is always going to be greater than the number of combinations. Permutations are always more, combinations are lesser. Okay, so remember that simple concept. Now, let's try a simple idea. Let's say that you own um, six shirts and four pants. And you want to figure out how many different combinations you can create, assuming that every shirt can be worn with every pant of yours. So the number of combinations that you can create in this case, is going to be 6 times 4, which is equal to 24. And this is very simple, because with each shirt, you can have 4 pants. So with 6 shirts, you will have 6 times 4, which is a total of 24 combinations that you can create. Okay. Now let's say that you have 6 shirts and 4 pants, and you also have 3 jackets. And the question says, how many combinations can you now create, assuming that you wear one of each item? So the number of combinations that you can now create, what do you think the answer should be? Number of combinations. Think about it. Well, the answer is going to be 6 times 4 times 3, which is equal to 72. So you can create 72 different combinations uh, using your six shirts, your four pants, and your three jackets. That's quite a few, isn't it? Right. Now, let's start with some basic permutations. Uh, but before we start off with permutations, we need to know what factorials are. Okay. Now, factorials are very useful in permutations and combinations. And factorials are is basically um, a mathematical operation and we use the exclamation mark for factorials. And it means nothing, it's just, it just means that you've got to multiply down from that number up till, you, up till the value of one. So for example, you want to figure out what four factorial is, this is going to be equal to four times three times two times one, which is equal to 24, okay? If you want to calculate what six factorial is, this is going to be 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. And that's going to be 720. So factorials are quite easy. They can be quite lengthy to calculate, obviously, because as they become larger, you've got to multiply by a larger number, and it becomes tough to do. But it's not so difficult to do. So what is one factorial going to be equal to? It's 1. But here's an important concept. 0 factorial is also equal to 1. Okay. Uh, don't worry about why that happens. Just remember that 0 factorial is equal to 1 as well. 
Right, so going on uh, further about factorials, uh, you might get a simple question which needs you to simplify factorials. For example, a question might say, what is the value of 7 factorial divided by 5 factorial? Now, 7 factorial is easy. That's 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. Dividing by 5 factorial would be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So 5 cancels with 5 and 4 with 4 and so on and so forth. And what you're left with is 7 times 6, which is equal to 42. Another way of looking at the same problem is that 7 factorial can be written as 7 times 6 times the rest is going to be 5 factorial. And when you divide by 5 factorial, it's easy to cancel out, and you're left with 7 times 6, which is equal to 42. Okay? Right. So, can you do a quick calculation and tell me what the value of 8 factorial divided by 6 factorial is going to be equal to? Yes, it's going to be 8 into 7 into 6 factorial divided by 6 factorial. And this cancels out and you're left with 8 into 7, which is equal to 56. Right. And what is going to be the value of 10 factorial divided by 7 factorial? Yes, it's going to be 10 into 9 into 8 into 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial, where this cancels out and leaves you with 10 into 9 into 8, which is equal to 720. So I hope the concept of factorials is clear to you. Right, now moving on to basic permutations. Okay. Let's say that a question wants you to arrange three letters, letters A, B, C. The question says, how many arrangements of these letters are possible? Now let's try to write them down. Now the first arrangement is A, B, C. The second is A, C, B. The third is B, A, C. The fourth is B, C, A. The fifth is C, A, B. The sixth is C, B, A. Are there any further arrangements possible? No. So we have a total of six arrangements. But writing them down can be time consuming and you can obviously make mistakes as well. So there's an easier way of doing this question and that is that you create three dashes or three spots that you have. For the first spot the number of options that you have is three because there are three letters A, B and C. For the second position, you now have only two options because one letter has already been used in the first position, so you'll obviously have a two. And for the last position, you have only one option left. And you should multiply these numbers. So you get three times two times one, which is equal to six. And if you relate it to the concept of factorials, you would have noticed that this is also equal to three factorial because three Factorial is 3 into 2 into 1, which gives you 6. Okay? So the concept of factorials is very important in permutations. It can be really time-saving for you. This brings us to the first concept in permutations, which is if you want to arrange n different objects in a straight line, then the number of arrangements is always equal to n factorial. Okay? Very important concept. So, for example, if you wanted to arrange the letters A, B, C, D, E, there are five letters, and their arrangements, the number of arrangements, is going to be five 5 factorial, which is equal to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. That's 120. That's the answer. Okay?
So if you want to arrange n different objects, very important that all of them are different from each other, n different objects in a straight line, the number of arrangements is always equal to n factorial. So here's a question for you. In how many ways can you arrange the letters in the word phones? Try it out. Yes, it's very simple. There are six letters and there is no repetition, so we can use the formula n factorial, which is going to be 6 factorial. That's going to be 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, and that is equal to 720. That's your answer. There are 720 arrangements of all the letters in the word forms. Okay. Now we go on to the next concept, how to arrange n objects in a straight line, given that some objects are repeated. For example, the letters in the word apple. Now, apple has five letters, so you might argue that it's going to be five factorial. And you're not wrong, because there are five letters. But see, there are two P's, so you have two letters that are basically duplicates of each other. So to discount their repetition, what you've got to do is divide 5 factorial by 2 factorial, which means it's going to be 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 divided by 2 into 1. Okay, and that would give you 60 as your answer and not 120. Okay, so I want you to try to figure out the number of arrangements of all the letters in the word banana. Okay, think about this. Press the pause button and try it yourself. Okay, here's a solution. There are six letters in the word banana. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the number of arrangements, we start from six factorial, but then there's repetition. There are three A's, so we divide by three factorial. And there are two n's, so divide by two factorial separately. So what do we get? We get 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 upon 3 into 2 into 1 into 2 into 1. And this cancels here with this, and this cancels with this. So what you're left with is 60 again. Okay? I hope this is clear to you.